Hey, what's going on guys? It's TrackYT here, or Nick, back with another Minecraft video, guys. Today, I want to update my previous video about how to use Schematica, and I want to give you guys a little bit more insight on exactly how to do that and answer everybody's questions from the previous video. <laughs> So we are going to start off with one of the major questions that I received in the last video, and that is, okay, Nick, what if I'm playing on a Mac or I'm not playing with a full keyboard? Well, I want to show you guys a quick solution to how to open up the Schematica mod. So if you haven't watched my previous video, make sure to do that first because this is kind of an extension of that video. So when opening up Schematica or Schematics, you have to use your number pad, which opens up using your divide key, your multiplication key, and your negative key. So if you wanted to load up a Schematica, you would have to use the divide key. And then all of the schematics that you have in your schematic folder would be in there. Well, for some people, they don't have that or they're playing on a Mac. So the way to be able to open up those schematics is you actually have to go into your options, your controls, scroll all the way to the bottom where it says schematica. So in the controls, you can actually change which key on your keyboard you want to be able to open up your schematic so that would be your load schematic right now it's currently set to divide so if you were to click on that and then press any other button on your keyboard so let's say h then now the h button will open up schematica and you can do that for manipulate schematic and then also for save schematic so you're going to want to change those so now that you know how to actually open up a schematic let's go ahead and actually open one up we'll actually probably open up this exact build so we'll hit that divide key or what other ever key that you have set to open up schematics and then you'll have to choose a schematic and this brings us to another question that a lot of people ask well nick where do i get schematics from well when i made the first video i wasn't really thinking about where would people get schematics why would you not know that so you're gonna want to go probably online somewhere and just search schematic downloads and then you'll find one what a schematic actually is this is a template or a file type of someone else's build that has been previously saved so in my instance I made base showcases I made skyblock island videos and I left schematic files in the description so in any of my videos there's typically a download in the description so if you want to you can use one of my schematics or you can find someone else's schematic online download it and put it in your schematic folder which, if you don't know how to do that, make sure to watch my previous video because I show exactly how to put those schematics in that folder. So we're just going to load up Island 1, which is the schematic that is of the build in front of us. And when you do that, it's going to actually just implement that schematic into your world. And now to manipulate that schematic, you're going to want to hit your minus key or whatever key that you have set to that. And this is where you can go ahead and move around your schematic. So you can move it by the X's, you can move it by the Y's, you can move it by the Z's and that is how you really move it around in down in the bottom corner you can rotate your schematic you can flip your schematic let's say I want to flip it south you can flip it south you can flip it or manipulate it in any way possible one thing I didn't show in my previous video was how to I showed how to use schematic and like how to build with it but one thing that's actually very very useful and that's using the layering system that's already built into schematica so one thing that I didn't show in my previous video was how to use use the layers within schematica and that's actually probably the easiest way you're going to want to build using schematica so come back into your manipulation and over on the right side you'll see where it says all you're going to want to click that and it's going to change it to layers and now you can build using layers so by hitting the minus and plus keys you can load up different layers so you can see it'll build a layer then you can place all those blocks add another place all those blocks and keep doing that and it'll basically make it a lot easier to build it because if you're using all when you're placing the blocks it's going to kind of be hard when you're on let's say like the inside and you can't really see anything in here so if you're in your layers instead you can actually just build it by layer instead that's just so much easier to do the other thing that I didn't show in my previous video well is how to actually make a schematic of your own and that's actually fairly simple so you're gonna want to hit your multiplication key which is your save schematica so if you have it changed to a different key on your keyboard go ahead and press that key then this screen is gonna show up you're gonna want to before you do anything go down your bottom right and turn the schematic to on instead of off so now you can actually place in points so what you're going to want to do is fly or move to a spot that you want which is kind of on the outer edge of your build and then you're going to want again 
hits one of these two. I typically hit the red one first, so you'll hit that, and you'll notice that the red point shows up, and it kind of gives you an outline of the selection that you're doing. And then you're going to want to go to probably the other side of your build, and you're going to want to fly over there, and then you're going to want to press the blue key. And what this is going to do is it's going to set another point, and this is basically trying to encapsulate your entire build. So now you can kind of see my entire build is caps encapsulated. I can't say the word encapsulated, but so now you can actually move around those points. So let's say the blue point or the red point was not in the right spot. So let's say I wanted to make the red point move out a little bit more, or maybe I wanted to move it down, or maybe I wanted to move it up. You can use that kind of how you wanted to manipulate your schematic when you had the file. This is manipulating your selection point. So now if you find the right selection that you want, you come down to the bottom right and you name your schematic. So let's say I'm just going to name this one test. Now you're going to go ahead and hit save and you're going to hit the escape T to get out of it. And you'll see in your bottom right of your chat or bottom left, it's going to say starting to save chunks, whatever number of chunks your schematic is. And then when it's done, it's going to say successfully saved blank schematic. That is basically saying that your schematic is saved and it'll actually put it inside of your schematics folder where you have all of your other schematics when you load them up. You can see now it says test at the bottom. So now you know how to load up schematics. Now you know how to manipulate schematics when you have them loaded. Now you know how to create the schematic of your own. Well, one thing that I did not show in my previous video was how to go about using Schematico in combination with World Edit. So now we're over on our desktop and we're going to show you guys how to implement schematics into your world edit folder. So you're going to want to pull up a file explorer. You're going to want to come up to the top and type in percent app data percent. Then you're going to want to click on your dot Minecraft folder. And this is going to show every single file that you have for Minecraft. You probably don't have all these in here because I have different mods installed such as replay mod, schematica and all different things. So in this dot Minecraft folder, you're going to see a couple things that may be of interest for you related to Schematica. First, you may have a schematics folder. If you don't, you probably should create one by hitting new folder up here. And this is the file or the folder that you actually want to put your schematics in using Schematica. So when we're in Schematica, you can see we have that file test that we saved earlier. And I have a bunch of other schematics in here from different things. So that Schematica file, you're going to want to copy that, probably put it on your desktop just for ease of use. And then you're going to go back into your dot Minecraft folder and so implement this test file into Minecraft using world that it basically pasting it in. We're going to want to go up to this config folder. We're going to click on that and then we're going to want to click on world edit. You should have a world edit folder if you have world edit installed. So you're going to click on that and then you're going to have a folder in here called schematics. If you don't have this, you're going to want to go ahead and create one using the new folder. I for one have one. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this new folder since I already have a schematics folder. You're going to want to click on that. And then now you're going to have a folder. Yours potentially will be blank or empty if you have never put a schematic in there before. I have, so I've used a bunch of them. So I'm going to go ahead and take my test file that I put on my desktop and drag it into this folder. I already have this exact file in there, so I'm just going to hit replace file and destination. You shouldn't have to do that because your folder probably is blank. So now that I've dragged it in there, now the test file is in the world edit file. So now we can actually load up this schematic and paste it in using world edit. So we're going to jump back over into Minecraft so that way we can show you guys how to implement any schematic file using world edit. So now that you have the schematic file inputted into your world edit folder, you're going to want to be able to load that up and be able to paste it in. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to do slash slash schematic space load MC edit and MC edit is the file type. You don't have to download MC edit. It's just the file type and then the name of your schematic. And in my case, it was test. So now that you have it loaded up, you can see it says test loaded, paste it with slash slash paste. So what you're going to want to do is come to kind of an open area. It's kind of weird how it pastes. It doesn't really it kind of pays from like the bottom left corner of the schematic file. So come to where you want and then just hit, hit slash slash paste. Now it's going to take a second to load up depending on the size of your schematic file. If it's larger, it's probably going to kill your computer if you don't have a really good computer. If it's smaller, it should load up without any real difficulty. So mine's currently loading up. You can see it's not really doing anything right now. And that's because the file is a little bit larger. So it's kind of taking world that a little bit to load that file up. Now it took me about a minute for this to load in, but it did eventually load in and now your schematic file has turned into a real build within Minecraft and that's kind of how you go about loading in schematics using world edit now I would highly suggest only using this for smaller schematics because once you get super big 
typically if your computer's not good enough, it's really going to put a lot of stress on it and typically will crash your Minecraft world over and over and over again because your computer just can't handle loading in such a large amount of blocks. So if you're really trying to load in a large schematic, I would suggest downloading MC Edits and using that to import those schematics. Now I probably will not make a video on MC Edit because to be honest with you, I don't really know much about MC Edit, only about how to input large schematics. So I'm sure there's some tutorials out there that have very good details on how to actually use MC Edit. So if you're curious about how to load in very, very large schematics because loading it in with World Edit isn't working for you, I would suggest going ahead and finding out how to use MC Edit and doing it that way. One other thing that I want to show you guys is you can actually save schematics using World Edit. So what you're going to want to do is make a selection using points. So we're going to do position one here and then we're going to fly all the way over to here and we're going to make our second selection over here so position number two and it's pretty much the same thing as loading it except we're saving it so now we're going to do schematic uh, save and then we're going to name it so we're going to name it test two and now it's saved it into our schematics world edit folder so it's not in the schematic folder for schematics it's in that same folder that we put the schematic test in to be able to load it using world edit and now if you wanted to you can go ahead and you can actually load up the schematic you just saved so test two and now if i wanted to i can go ahead and paste that selection again and it'll paste in another build one other thing about schematica that i didn't show you guys is when you're loading in a schematic so let's say we're loading in this island again one thing that probably is pretty useful at least for survival players is if you're in your manipulation screen you can go down to the bottom left and you can see where it says materials so if you click on that you can actually see exactly the number of materials that you're going to need to build this build now when you start placing the materials it's going to count those numbers so let's say you place in the one redstone ore, it's going to say one of one and so on for all of these blocks and you can see you're going to need a lot of spruce leaves you're going to need a lot of stone you're going to need a lot of different things so it's actually very helpful because if you're playing survival minecraft you can kind of get a gist of exactly what you need so you can build that and then you're prepared for when you want to go ahead and implement that build. So the other question that I think a lot of people had was like, Nick, why is my forge crashing or my schematica crashing? What are, what's going on? What is going on with that? Why am I having crashes? Well, that's typically because, well, you didn't install things correctly. And the biggest mistake I think a lot of people do when installing schematica or any mods for forge is they're not making them all the exact same file type. And what I mean by that is if you're playing on 1.8 Minecraft, you need to make sure that all of the mods are exactly 1.8, not 1.8.9, not 1.8.1, exactly 1.8. Because if they're not the exact same version of Minecraft, you're going to run into issues and you're going to have crash issues. The other thing that you may be running into issues is maybe you don't have the newest version of that mod. These mods typically have a lot of updates for each version. So you could be having all of the mods being exactly 1.8, but let's say that your Lunatrous Core isn't the most up-to-date version of 1.8. So you're going to want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date version of said version of Minecraft. So if you're playing on 1.8 Minecraft, make sure you have the most up-to-date 1.8 mod. And if you're having any other issues, I'm not really sure. Maybe your computer can't handle it. Maybe something along those lines. You know, these mods do take up some PC power that you may or may not have. So if you're playing on a, a less expensive less powerful computer you may run into some issues typically you won't but there's possibilities that you will especially when you're loading in schematics using world edit so if you're having those issues you probably should I, that may be the issue that you're having and obviously guys if there's any other things that this video did not answer for you if you have any other schematic related questions leave them down in the comment section down below and I will try to answer those as best as I possibly can but guys that's where today's video is going to come to a wrap if you guys did enjoy today's video if you guys thought that today's video was at all helpful again let me know down below i would love to hear some feedback from you and i want to be able to help as many people as possible so by giving me your feedback it allows me to help you guys to the best of my ability but as always guys i love you all see you guys next time peace out